Working in cavalry is a lot different than working in After Effects, and it can be easy to get overwhelmed with all that cavalry can do. So this series of tutorials is to show my approach to practical motion design in cavalry. The biggest difference is animating less by hand using keyframes and more about creating systems. Keyframes are still needed, but you'd be surprised at how few you need to actually make something complex. One flow that I use all the time is the duplicator sequence, setting up a base animation once to then create a dynamic sequence. I did make a plugin to help with this workflow, but I'll talk more about that later. A common thing that motion designers have to do is to visually show complex data. Working in cavalry and using a duplicator sequence makes it super easy to do. The first step to doing this is to think about the first base animation that you want, which in this case would just be a single bar animating up to a specific point. So let's start out by creating a rectangle and we're just going to resize the width a little bit and we can drop the height. The other thing that we want to do is add an align deformer and push that all the way to one. This way, when we move the height, it'll move from the bottom like a bar chart should animate. In After Effects, you may have to go through and animate each bar individually, but in Cavalry, everything is dynamic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the radius mode to individual and set the top corners more round than the bottom ones. I'm going to make a an array from my color palette. And for this one, I'm going to get rid of this color since that's the same color as the background. We're going to connect this color array into the rectangle shape fill color. And let's add some text. For this one, I'm going to center align it. We're going to just drop that down a little bit. This is the very basic shape that we want to animate. We have our bar chart here. It's got a color and it's got some text underneath it. Now to make it dynamic, First, let's add a string array. This will let us change the text per bar here. So all we need to do now is to plug this into here and you'll see that it shows item one. To make each rectangle animate to its correct position individually takes a little bit more setup, but it's pretty simple. So the first thing that we need to do is to add a value blend. And basically we're gonna animate this and dynamically change the second number so that each individual bar chart can have its own individual stopping point. So I'm gonna throw a quick animation on there now. So I'm gonna set the strength to zero, keyframe that on one, and we'll just go out to 12 and keyframe that to 100. We can add some easing on there real quick, just a simple, something like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plug this value blend into the height. And right now it's animating from zero to zero, so we don't actually see anything. So next what we need is a value array. And we need to add a couple more values. We're going to have five, which is the same as the amount of strings that we have. And this is where you would place the actual values for the bar charts. So first what we're going to do is we're going to plug the value array into the value blend's second position. So now it is going to animate from zero to whatever we put in here. So to see how that works on this first one, if we bump this up to here, about 300, we can see that the value blend is driving the animation from zero to 300. So now we have our rectangle, we have our text, we have a color array that is going into the actual rectangle. We have a string array going into the text here to change what the description is. And we have a value array that is going to change the heights of each bar. All right, so now that that's all set up, let's kind of clean up our layers a little bit. I like to keep the arrays on their own so that we can change them easily later. And I'll also keep the value blend out here because we may want to change the timing or the easing later. So right now our main base animation has two layers. And so that means that we need to group them together because when you push things through the duplicator, if it's more than one layer or if it's something that has an animation, it needs to be in a group first so that the duplicator duplicates the group and doesn't duplicate each thing kind of individually. So let's rename this to bar chart. And now with this selected, if we hold alt and click on the duplicator button, you'll see some stuff start popping up. Now it looks weird now, but that's because it's not in the right distribution that we want. Duplicator's default distribution is grid, which is also defaulted to a three by three, but we want a horizontal line of five. So let's just change this to linear and set our count to five. 
Now you see that they're all kind of jammed up on each other. So what we need to do is we need to just change the size. And you can do this two ways. The first is fit, which basically means it'll evenly space everything out to fit within the size. Or you can do step, which gives you a specific amount in between each item. Now you see that right now, we only have one thing animating. The reason that we don't see anything else is because our value array has zeros for everything else. So to make it more clear, let's change this to bar height array, and we'll change this to bar label array. So now in our bar height array, this is where you would place all your data values. So for this example, I'm just gonna give random numbers. And so we can see they all animate in. They all have different colors, they all have different labels, they all have different heights. And what's great about setting it up this way is that if later on the client says, oh, this is actually, I gave you the wrong number, you can change that and it's super easy to update. Now, we don't want them all to animate on at the same time. So how we would change that is in the duplicator, there's a shape time offset. And basically what this does is our initial bar chart animation, which is actually this value blend, starts at zero and goes to 12. With the shape time offset, if we were to pull this down to let's say negative 15, that means that our animation gets pushed to the right 15 frames. And so now at 15, they start animating on. Now this doesn't actually help us because they're all still animating on at the same time. So what we need to do here is we right click, add a behavior and add a stagger behavior. So you can see with the default values, it's kind of working. There is an offset, but it's animating the wrong order. And at zero, some of these are still showing. They don't all start at zero. So with the time offset, positive values push the animation time to the left, which is actually negative. So here we can't see it because we can only go to zero. So what we actually want to do is set the maximum to zero and then mess around with the minimum. And so here at zero, nothing is animating. And then it's starting to animate. And you can see they all animate one after the other starting at zero. But as we can see, it's still backwards. So what we need to do is we need to go into our graph and then click this button, which is reverse. So now they animate from left to right. If you want to adjust the timing between each animation, you would just make this longer. So here you can see it's a little bit more one after the other or here, they're much more together. So now what's great about this is that we have set up our own bar chart system. So if the client ever comes back and wants to make a change, it's actually super easy. So let's say they want item three to be called something else. All you need to do, you go to your bar label, go to index two, which is actually the third because it starts at zero, and you just change this to something else and it automatically updates here same thing with the values you can just change these however you want and it's super easy to update same thing with the color let's say they don't like the white color so we just change that to green that's updated it's green now and what's great about setting things up this way is that anything we change to the initial bar chart group will be updated to everything else. So let's say now that we got everything set, we actually want to have a texture on our bars. Instead of having to go into each one individually and make these changes, we just go to the main base rectangle, add an image shader, we open that up, and then I'm gonna pull in this wooden texture that I have, and you'll see they all change. Now the settings for the image texture, if you want to retain the color underneath, you just set the blend mode to something else. I'm gonna do source atop so that you retain the original color, but also the texture stays as it is as well. And anything that I do to the single base animation updates for every single chart. Some more examples of using this workflow is to do title sequences like this. I created one single shape that animated on, and then I just added a raise to the color and the text, offset that, and you've got a really cool looking intro. And I did the same thing with these little elements that pop in. 
I only made a single animation and then push it through a duplicator sequence to make these kind of complex, interesting looking little animated widgets. And as shown previously, you can use duplicator sequences to take a simple animation like this, add your color arrays and things like that, and make much more complex systems like this one. So hopefully this tutorial helps you start thinking with systems in mind and helps you see how you can use cavalry for practical motion design.